In upcoming videos, I plan to utilize the Raspberry Pi Zero as the main computational driving force for these projects. Being a programmer, I feel much more at home with code and operating systems than I do with electrical components and microcontrollers. Thus, the Raspberry Pi Zero lets me leverage my skills while still being able to learn and use electrical components via GPIO pins. Coming in at only $5 with Raspberry Pi Zero and $10 for its wireless Pi Zero W sister board, these boards are cheap and pack a decent punch. They feature a single core CPU running at 1GHz and 512 megabytes of RAM. They also include two micro USB ports, one mini HDMI port, a CSI video connector, and 40 GPIO pins. All of this for less than the cost of a ticket to the movies. The Pi Zero, however, isn't going to be replacing your computers or phones in any stretch of the imagination. But what is the limit for this little computer? While I plan on exploring its uses in future videos that do push this device, but today I want to visit a classic computer question of, but can it run Crisis? Well, unfortunately I'm running this device as a headless unit, so the answer to that is no. But as a programmer and a Minecraft mod maker, I thought I'd take my own spin on this and ask the question, but can it run a Minecraft server? Honestly, I have no idea what to expect, and I know that the server probably won't be very playable, but I am curious if I can even start up the server and connect to it. So without further ado, let's get this Pi Zero set up and find out the answer. So the first thing we need to do is to flash our OS onto our SD card. I'm going to leverage the Raspberry Pi imager they give you, simply because it's a built-in solution and you don't need to download any of the OSs, it does it for you, and it writes your SD card and formats it properly. So I'm going to use this, and the first thing we're going to do is to select our OS. This tool provides you a few different OSs you can choose. However, for this, we're just going to be using Raspbian, so we're actually going to go to Raspbian Other and select Raspbian Lite. This is a no desktop version, so this will run headless, which means it doesn't have a GUI or desktop for you to interface with. Instead, we'll be doing this all over command line. Let's go ahead and hit Write, and it'll slowly begin the process of writing and actually downloading the OS. Um, so if you haven't set one up before, this will probably take longer for you than it did for me. I've already downloaded uh, the latest version because I did write this a little bit ago, so it's still cached. However, if this is your first time with this tool, it'll probably take much longer than it did for me. But this tool will go ahead and write and set up your SD card. So I'll catch you guys once this is finished. So now that our OS has been written to our SD card, we need to go ahead and uh, unplug and replug our SD card into your computer. When Raspberry Pi Imager finishes, it actually unmounts the SD card from the OS or the uh, computer you're on. So we need to do that to remount it and we can actually then see the SD card uh, in your file explorer or however that might be. So now that you have it replugged in, find it in your browser, your file browser. Uh, it should be something like a removable disk, just like any USB that you plug into your computer is. Once you find that, you should see a folder with a bunch of contents in it. So this is what mine looks like. Yours should actually almost look identical to this, just a bunch of uh, boot files and stuff that the OS relies upon. So the first thing we need to do is because this is headless, we need to enable SSH to work. To do this, we actually just simply create a file in this folder called SSH, no file extension or nothing, just a file named SSH. That will enable SSH when we boot up our Pi. The next thing we need to do is to create a file that will allow the Pi to connect to our network that we're on to allow us to SSH to it uh, when the Pi starts up. So go ahead and make a file called WPA underscore supplicant dot CONF. Uh, this will all be linked down in the description below as long as it with a tutorial that goes over all this. So if you don't catch us here, just read that. It's a very basic tutorial. So it tells you how to set this all up headless, so don't worry about it too much. You can get this code here that I've copied and pasted in. So if you don't get this in here, don't worry too much. Just go to that link and this will it'll help you out a lot. So basically when we're in this config here, this is what the this is what tells the Pi to connect to the network. So we have to specify the country. And we also have to specify the uh, network name and network password. Obviously, I'm not going to show you that here, but um, that's what I put in there. So now we have both the SSH and that WPA supplicant file in this uh, SD card. So go ahead and unmount it like I just did and go ahead and unplug the SD card from your computer and then just insert it into your Raspberry Pi and power it up. So once the Pi powers up, give it a few minutes because it has to do the initial startup, initial setup. But uh, after a minute or two, you should see it pop up on your network. If you have a way to see all the devices on your network, just monitor that until you see it. Because from that, you'll need to also then grab the IP address of your Pi. 
Um, I'm not going to go over how to do that. Uh, you should sort of know how to do that on your computer if you're kind of doing this, but um, there's, again, tutorials out there that will go more in depth over this than I am. So now that we have the device on the network, I have actually opened up two command prompts here. Uh, these are git bashes. You need something that will be able to allow you to SSH into your device. Uh, again, tutorials will help be your friend here. I'm assuming you know how to, but um, at any rate, on their first uh, bash or shell or whatever you have open to connect SSH, just run SSH space pi and then at with the IP address that you're connecting to. So this is the IP address of the Raspberry Pi on your network. Um, you should get some bunch of text here, um, basically just telling you intro introduction to the Pi. Uh, when it prompts you the password, the password by default is just Raspberry. Um, it will tell you to reset it using that command I just highlighted there um, to make it more secure. That way your password isn't the default one. But at any rate, this is just a demo, so I don't really matter too much. So the first two things I'm going to do is I'm going to run sudo apt update. This will make sure that everything in the Raspberry Pi is up to date. Um, and if anything is not, the next command sudo apt upgrade will then actually upgrade it and update it to the latest versions. Uh, this is a new version of Raspbian uh, directly from the latest, so everything should be up to date. But uh, whenever I do a new instance of an OS for Raspbian like this, I just always get in the habit of running, running these two commands just to be sure of it. Um, so like I said, I have two uh, windows or two bashes open here. Um, the first one will be one I'm running commands on, and the second one will be a monitoring one. So when I'm actually running the Minecraft server, the top one, I believe, will have uh, HTOP running. That just shows me the RAM and CPU usage of the Raspberry. Um, that way I can kind of monitor it and see if I have any bottlenecks and see where the bottlenecks are. And then off to the right there, you can see FileZilla. That's just what is going to allow me to move files between uh, my desktop and the Raspberry. So just useful programs for me to have. Um, and I'll just go ahead and catch you guys when this is all done and I'm ready to start the Minecraft server up. So it seems by default Java actually isn't installed on this Raspberry, uh, at least in the light version. So we actually have to install it. So there's a command I have, I have up here that I'll actually include in the description below. This will install uh, OpenJDK, which is the open version of the Java JVM, I believe. You can correct me if I'm wrong there. But uh, we're gonna install the version eight of this, which is just Java eight. Um, this will allow Minecraft to run. Minecraft does need Java to run, so obviously we will need this in order to have the server start. So uh, you can always just check this by running the command Java in the command prompt. If it says it's not a recognized command, more than likely than not, you don't have Java installed. Um, so this command here will install Java, and then once this is done, we will move over the jar to the server, and we will run the Minecraft server jar and go through the whole process of seeing if it starts up. All right, so I've now moved the Minecraft server over to my Raspberry Pi using uh, FileZilla there. I have now just run the command to start the server up, including the no GUI command, because again, this is ahead of the server, so we don't need the GUI. And you'll immediately see, as soon as I run it, the CPU and RAM at the top basically go full red line maxed out. Never a good sign. I was sort of expecting this to happen because the startup of the server is actually pretty CPU intensive because it's actually starting up. It's just trying to start up as fast as possible. So uh, I knew this would sort of happen, um, but as you can see, there's the first log of it starting up. And then right there, it has just gone to the point where I have to accept the EULA. Uh, whenever you run a Minecraft server the first time, you have to go in and actually change a, a file to set the EULA to true basically to say you've accepted it. Usually on your machine, it takes uh, basically a fraction of a second. Here, uh, it took a few seconds. So that's already not off to a good start. But uh, of course, you know, I want to see what happens. So uh, I should go through and I do accept the EULA. But um, yeah, I'll catch you guys up when this is actually started and go from there. All right, so EULA is accepted, the server is running. I'm actually speeding this up a lot. So this took about 45 seconds and I basically get nowhere. Uh, as you can see there on the console, uh, it's slowly going. You can see there up in the top, it is basically redlining the CPU and memory. It's just using it all up. Uh, it's, it's not going fast at all. Um, I pop up Minecraft here just to see if I connect it, set my settings up. And actually, I was very curious to give you a comparison. So what I actually do here is I actually am now going to boot up a server from my local computer here and I will show you how fast this is actually supposed to go on your regular desktop to kind of give you a baseline. 
um, as you can see it goes pretty quickly it, it doesn't take long for it to start up so the Raspberry Pi is definitely struggling a lot and at this point it was not very viable obviously it's been over 45 minutes and this has been booting it, it's not really practical at all at this point I'm more of just seeing will it even boot and can we even join the server so I'm gonna let this sit I'm just gonna see how long it takes and we're gonna try and go from there so before I let it sit and just try and boot up I was curious to see if the memory at all was causing an issue of a bottleneck and so because of the memory we can actually sort of mitigate this by creating a swap file which is essentially allowing part of your memory to exist on your uh, hard drive um, I went ahead and put a one gigabyte I think it was actually three I meant to do one but uh, I put a swap file onto my SD card in order to alleviate the memory so that it actually I could actually run the server at one gigabyte of Java RAM instead of 512 that I was limited to here and what I want you to notice is if you watch the CPU you'll see a balance between hundred percent utilization and like 10 20 and 30 percent utilization so now that I saw this, it actually made sense that the SD card was going to become the bottleneck now because the SD card is just not fast enough to act as a swap file to move memory between our really fast RAM and the really slow SD card. And it was actually slow, slow in fact that it couldn't keep the CPU fed with memory in order to do its work. It actually was slowing the CPU down because it had to take time to move uh, data from the fast RAM to the slow SD card and back and forth and that back and forth transfer just did not give the CPU enough to continue its computation so actually adding more RAM to this made it slower so just did something to note there just I kind of found interesting it makes a lot of sense when you think about it but um, just something to notice so we are kind of limited mainly by our CPU here and just the whole process uh, we can't really improve this at all so just a small aside there I wanted to kind of demonstrate and show but at any rate let me just let it run let it go and let's see how long it takes and just is it at all workable can we join just what happens if we let this sit and let it finish booting the server up alright so again I have sped this all up this is going much much faster this ended up taking like two hours uh, I'll show you the ending log here when it's finished but it took really long for this to boot up just again not practical in any sense of the imagination and what's worse is it did boot up it got to the point to where you could join a server however it really just immediately crashed so I will show you around the screen here now is the actual ending log I didn't have a video of this because again I stopped this after uh, basically I was like this is just kind of pointless is going on forever so this is the very end of the log here and as you can see it took I, I don't want to do the math on that but you can do the math yourself it took that many seconds there uh, to actually start up the server and as you can see there it basically immediately crashed because the very first tick I'm gonna assume took way too long to process the server basically assumed that because it took so long that it was a crash and it just shut the server down so verdict here no you cannot start a minecraft server on a raspberry pi zero maybe if you did some very fancy magic with the java args and maybe some other stuff in the advanced uh, raspberry pi settings maybe i'm not saying it's impossible maybe you could i don't know but just as a stock as it is and just very basic uh, setup process it it's not practical it's not possible and even if you got it to boot up it's just not practical in this searcher's imagination um, I knew this wasn't really practical to begin with but I do have some projects coming up that will push this Raspberry Pi to limit and actually I got some surprising results from what I've done so far on these projects so any rate stay tuned for that subscribe if you're not and I will see you guys all in future videos with this and hopefully you guys enjoy I'll see you guys all later peace out